Hi everybody, Johnny here. Let's make a game together. For this game, we'll need a couple sheets of paper. We'll need a ruler, a little bit of tape maybe, something to write with, maybe a couple colored pencils, some playing pieces, a couple dice, maybe a dime and a penny. And we'll need something else. What is it? Oh, I know what we need. We'll need a bear. So let's get started. We're going to start with just the tape and the paper. Just a little bit of tape. And what I want to do is take the two sheets of paper and tape them together like so. Line them up as well as you can. And I'm going to tear this in two pieces. One piece to go up here and one piece to go down here. And now I'm going to flip it over. And we have what we need. I'm going to move our friend over just a little bit and give ourselves a little bit more room with this because it's a big game board, isn't it? And that'll be perfect, just like that. So I'm going to need my ruler for this part. What I want to do is, on the top here, Measure down about half an inch, maybe a centimeter or so if you're using another kind of measure. Half an inch. At the bottom as well, measure about half an inch up on both sides. Okay, and go ahead and draw a line with your pencil all the way across. Bottom as well. All the way across. Now with the ruler, go ahead and put the 5 in the middle. If you're using metric, probably 15. And go ahead and mark every single mark. 1, 2, make sure they're clear. 3, 4, 5 in the middle. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. If you're using metric, it will be every 3 centimeters or so. Down here, same thing, 5 in the middle, at the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now with my ruler, I'm going to come over here and line it up on the very last mark, and this time I'm going to use my other pencil. So measuring right here, all the way to 10, same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. The 10 is already done. And might as well draw a line all the way down from top to bottom right along here. Let's go ahead and do the same on the other side. Very last mark, tops and bottoms. Go ahead and draw that line all the way from top to bottom and make the marks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looking good so far. So let's go ahead and draw red lines going all the way down from top to bottom here following through. Another red line. Put the pencil in place. Another red line. Pencil in place. And we're going to switch the other way and go back to the other color now. As before, line it up. Lines all the way across. There we have it. There's our grid. Now I'm going to use this pen to put in some numbers. Let's start over here. One, two,
That's looking good. Let's continue with our game. I'll need the red pencil now. And I'm going to color from up here all the way inside of this square right here. So I'm coloring in using red all of these squares right here. And you can color them as fancy as you want to. For now, I'm going to color just this section in. All of these across in this square on top, 4x4 four four square. Now I want to color this 23 in, especially dark. This is a special square. You'll see why in a moment. Now I want to do the same thing down here with a blue pencil, starting at a 67. On the blue side, I want to color in the 78 really, really well. You might make the whole blue area or red area darker. There's one more thing I need to do to each side. I need to put in little corners like this. These numbers are going to matter a lot in the game too. So I'm putting little corners, little blue angles in each of these. just on the outside here. And on the red, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put a little red angle there, and there. We're almost done with our board. I'm going to do a few more things. I'm going to use the ruler and the big marker again just to make things stand out a bit. You decide how you want to make your own game. So I like really bold outside on my game. There. And there. And also across the top and the bottom. There. And the bottom too. I think this game needs a name, don't you? This game is called Cap Chur. And you'll like this part. One hundred. So let's play the game. Each one of these triangle spots gets a piece. Red has seven pieces, and these are the starting places for those pieces. Blue is going to be doing the same. Seven altogether for red, and seven for blue as well. And blue gets to put pieces down here. Seven as well. A couple more here. Now, what blue and red are trying to do is capture something from the other player. For red, red is protecting the penny and doesn't want blue to capture it. And blue is protecting the dime, doesn't want red to capture the dime. Moves are made with the dice, and the dice can represent either tens or ones. So for instance, this three, this three could be three moves positive, so from four, one, two, three to seven, or they could be negative. So for this one, three could be negative. Three minus one, two, three takes to 27, 67. So 70 to 67 is minus three. So it could be ones, or it could also be tens. So you can imagine this piece, it could be plus three tens, 10, 20, 30, and that piece could move here, 
or it could be minus 3 tenths. For this piece, it would be 97, 87, 77, 67. So positive and negative, either 1s or 10s. Pieces are moving along the board to try to capture the other, person, other side's treasure. Once that treasure is captured, that piece will move with that treasure, trying to get it back into the player's zone. So as soon as blue takes this penny into any part of the blue, then blue is won. If red takes this dime into any part of this red up here, then red has won. Let's play. Blue will go first. Blue rolls a 4 and a 5. Blue is going to go minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then minus 50, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now Blue's trying to get up there to take that penny. It's Red's turn. Red rolls a 3 and a 4. And Red is being strategic. Red says the 4 matters a whole lot. This piece, if it moves 10, 20, 30, 40, will send blue back to its home. Now, if, there more, if there's more than one space open here, red can choose which space to put the blue. But players' pieces always go back to the triangular marked spaces. Red still has three more to go. Red's going to use plus three, one, two, three, trying to get close to the dime. Blue's turn again. Blue rolls a one and a two. Blue decides to go minus 20, 1, 2, 10, 20, and then minus 1 to 49, trying to get to this red piece and knock it back home. Red's turn. A 2 and a 5. Now the dice can be split. It doesn't have to be just one piece. So what red's going to choose to do is move this plus 20 down here, one, ten, two tens, and then this one plus fifty, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, trying to get a few pieces down here. So this can be tens, this can be tens, these can be ones and ones. You decide how you want to organize them. So right now red has a lot of pieces going for that dime. It's blue's turn. Blue rolls a three and a one. Blue decides to go minus three, one, two, three, sending red back, and blue gets to choose where to put this piece, and blue chooses to put the piece here. Now red has one more, and red's going to go minus 10 to 36 to get closer to that prize. It's red's turn. Red rolls a six and a three. Red's going to make a bold move, adding by tens, six tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then three ones. One, two, three. Getting close to that dime, but it's a dangerous place for red to be right now. It's blue's turn. Blue rolls a five and a five. You can see neither five are going to help to take this red one away right now. What else could blue do? Blue decides to subtract by five tens. Minus 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then subtract by five ones. One, two, three, four, five. So blue's making a good move here as well. Red's turn. Red rolls. Red rolls a three and a one. Red likes the one. And then the three, red's thinking one, two, three, adding three. So the possibility of taking out one of these pieces. Blue's turn. Blue rolls a 3 and a 6. Neither of these numbers are going to get rid of this piece yet. But blue's going to make an attack of its own. Minus 3 tens. I'm sorry, minus 3 ones. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And then minus 6 tens. Minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50, minus 60. This is looking good for blue. Red's turn. Red rolls a 4 and a 5. Now there's a very special thing that can happen with a 4 and a 5. So Red's going to start by adding 5 tens to this one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But the 4 matters a whole lot here. 4 ones, 
with this piece, one, two, three, four, sends this blue piece back home. And red can choose where to put it, and red does not want to put it here on the 80 or the 97. You can see why. So red decides to put it on the 70. That's a better move. Blue's turn. Blue rolls a 1 and a 3. So blue decides to go minus 110 to 26 and minus 3 ones, 1, 2, 3, and takes the coin. Now wherever blue travels now, blue will carry that coin unless red knocks it off and then blue will have to come back home. Red takes a turn and red rolls a 6 and a 4 and red's going to double up on the attack. 1, 10, 2, 10s, 3, 10s, 4, 10s, 5, 10s, 6, 10s, and 4 more. 1, 2, 3, 4. So red has a lot going on here, but red has to worry about this too. Blue rolls. A 3 and a 2. What blue wants to do is get away from all these other pieces that might knock it off. So red, blue is going to use both of these as 1s. First 1, 2, and then 3, 1, 2, 3. Right now there's no red piece in good line with that blue piece, and blue just has to cross over into the blue space to win. Red's turn. A 5 and a 3. Red's going to chase after this piece by adding 5 ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's going to bring this piece in for the attack one, two, three, tens. One, ten, two, tens, three, tens. Looking good so far. Let's see what happens for blue. A four and a two. So blue's going to move four tens, adding four tens. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, and crosses into blue territory, and blue has won the game. Now, a couple things. What if blue were still here? Another way to think about it, if red on its turn had rolled a, rolls a 2 and a 2, red could go, sorry, red rolls a 1 and a 2, somewhere here, a 1 and a 2, red could go 1 plus and then two tens and knock blue off, sending blue back, and then red owns the penny again. If red owns the penny, red can take the penny back. So blue might have a turn, blue might roll a five and a five, one, two, three, four, five tens, minus five tens, and might go minus five ones, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. Then it's red's turn, and red might roll four and a four and decides to decide to carry the penny back. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. And so red can start carrying the penny where it wants to, as soon as it's captured it back from blue. Remember, the goal is to take the penny on the, of the other team into your territory. And if you've done that, you've made a capture for the game Capture 100. For this game, you needed two pieces of paper, maybe a little tape, Colored pencils would be good. Something to write with. Playing pieces. Some treasure. A couple dice. What else do we need? Oh, we'll need a ruler, definitely. There's still something else, though, isn't there? Oh, we'll need the bear. Do enjoy this game.